Hey guys, Mr. Jennings here. I'm looking at uh, chapter 32 um, this week in your books. Um, only one chapter this week, and uh, it is chapter 32. Uh, it's called True Success. And I just wanted to spend a little time going over that um, today uh, in the video. Um, won't take a, a long time to go through it. Uh, the jokes uh, each week. I, I went ahead and put in the email just to shorten the video a little bit for you so you're not watching the videos for so long. Uh, but hopefully you enjoy those. Uh, again, only one chapter. We only have a couple chapters left in the book. Uh, we have 32 this week and then we have 33, 34, and 35. Um, so um, right on schedule for what I'd like to get accomplished uh, for the remainder of the year, uh, whether that be in school or out of school. Uh, I definitely miss seeing you guys in class, um, but hope you are doing well. Um, and I want to go ahead and get into what I want to talk about today. Uh, again, uh, make sure as you go through um, that you're not just uh, uh, copying down the notes, um, filling in the blanks, uh, but taking the time to actually read through the chapter. Uh, this chapter in particular, uh, there's a story about William, T William Tyndale. Um, so a lot of this chapter is just something to read. So please make sure you do that. Um, it's a story that can be beneficial to us. Uh, so don't gloss over that. Don't skip that, please. Um, and be looking up the verses that, that are given in the chapter uh, and reading through those uh, as you go through. Now, this chapter also has a lot of the sections where answers will vary, um, where you need to provide the answers. So please make sure you're doing that and then turning that into me so I can uh, account for your work. Um, but keep up the good work and do a good job on this and make sure you get that submitted to me um, and then I'll, I'll get you grade in for that. Uh, so again, ch chapter 32, True Success. Uh, the, the three key points that I want us to see as we look through this chapter, I've been doing this for each one, but the three main themes to, uh, to come out of this chapter with in addition to all the other things uh, in the chapters that we see are, uh, first of all, success for the Christian begins with internal contentment in God rather than external pleasure in the things of the world. Again, success for the Christian uh, begins with internal contentment in God rather than external pleasure uh, in the things of the world. Uh, also, God gives specific guidelines on how to prosper as a Christian. So we'll look at it a little bit more, but what that means to be prosperous in the eyes of us as Christians, as opposed to what prosperity means to the world. Um, and then the uh, third thing that I want, hopefully we can take from this chapter is that inner contentment and joy are gifts from the Holy Spirit. So again, the three things, uh, three main key factors or points in this chapter uh, success for the Christian begins with internal contentment in God rather than external pleasure in the things of the world. Uh, God gives specific uh, guidelines on how to prosper as a Christian. And inner contentment and joy are gifts from the Holy Spirit. So as we start the chapter, uh, the first thing that it asks us to do, there's a section where its answers will vary, where you need to provide the answers. And it's basically, you know, what is your idea of success? Um you know, so many times we think of success and prosperity in worldly terms. Um, we all do. Um, and, and, and we can list some things there. So the question is, what is your definition of success? What do you personally define success as? Uh, so make sure you write that answer down. Um, and then it says, think through your definition and then list several aspects of success that you would consider important. And there's several blanks there, and you can probably come up with things pretty quickly. Just a, a quick list. Um, you know, obviously, people would think of success being probably a good job and, and money and, um, you know, a good family, uh, hopefully good air, good character, probably good education, but happiness and those kinds of things. Um, you know, hopefully you think of being in God's will and having that, that good character and a, a testimony as being successful. Um, but in terms of the world, that's not something that they would consider as, uh, important to success or anything like that. Uh, so, uh, again, just make a list there for yourself, um, to, uh, as we start this chapter, looking at success, uh, the next chapter continues with this, but, uh, just kind of what our baseline concept of what success is um, and then we're looking at what that is compared to uh, what God considers success and prosperity uh, so uh, 
the the next section there the pro to prosper and have good success and it's talking about in there uh, we look at uh, again the example of Jesus and in all these chapters we can look at Jesus's example um, and and there's several answers that you'll need to fill in some yes and no questions as you look at the life of Jesus and um, in terms of prosperity and success uh, and the the key thing I think that we can see there as far as hey prosperity and success um, to be like Christ, um, prosperity and successful, a successful life in the eyes of what Jesus did uh, would be to focus on meeting others' needs. When we think of success, a lot of times we think inwardly. The worldly success and prosperity, we think of inward things as far as to ourselves, as far as making money for ourselves and making a name for ourselves. But Jesus' um, goals and ambitions as far as prosperity and success were meeting the needs of others and fulfilling his father's will and that should be our same uh, desire uh, as christians what is our idea of prosperity and success it's not saying that um, having things is wrong that is not at all what we're saying here as a christian it's not mean does not mean you have to be poor and and uh, you know live poorly um, and, and struggle to get by but that should not be where our focus is if we're focused on uh, getting ahead and making money and doing all those things, we're probably not going to have the idea in mind of meeting others' needs uh, and fulfilling God's will for our lives because our pri our priorities aren't where they need to be. Uh, so that idea of Jesus, you know, we've seen this, the, the saying before, when we think of uh, true success and prosperity, we think of contentment and we think of peace and we think of joy. And you know that uh, saying, Jesus, others, yourself, um, you know, Jesus, or we could think of that as God, is putting God's will as a top priority and then thinking of others and then putting yourself last. That's not saying you, that you don't take care of yourself and do the things you need to to maintain a, a healthy, good lifestyle. Um, but your priority is, first of all, seeking God's will for your life um, and then doing what you can to meet the needs of others. And, you know, that's that's the difference between what the world views as prosperity um, and what we, we would think of as Christian or, or spiritual prosperity. Um, you know, don't think that you can't do what God wants you to do. When you, We've looked at God's will quite a bit. And, you know, the, the worldly prosperity um, it probably involves education and, and doing different things, um, gaining knowledge and those kinds of things. But, but the blessing of spiritual prosperity, despite... It's sometimes feeling difficult to us. And as we look at William Tyndale uh, and his story, we're going to see that it's difficult. Um, but God has already given us all that we need to be uh, prosperous in the eyes of Christianity or in the eyes of our spirituality. Uh, he's given us the necessary, necessary, necessary abilities, uh, talents, uh, and personalities to be successful uh, with the purpose he has given to us. So everything we need... Uh, he has given us. Now we need to put it to use and utilize it uh, and ask the Lord to use us in those ways. Uh, but he has equipped us to do what he has us for, has for us. He, he has called us to a purpose and he has equipped us to fulfill that purpose. Um, it's a, a matter of us decide, determining in our lives to do his will and do what he wants us to do rather than just think of what we want to do and um, focus on our own priorities for ourselves. Um, the next uh, section in the chapter, and I'm just kind of glancing through each one, how to prosper. Uh, and that where is a section where we look at several different verses. Again, please make sure you're reading the verses uh, as we go through. And then there's obviously some of the boxes are grayed out, but on each side, um, there are some things about how to prosper. Um, or if you do the the things on the right side of the column, how that will prevent you from prospering. Um, and again, what we are looking at there is prosperity in the terms of our spiritual prosperity and what should be our, our top priority. The idea of laying up riches in heaven as opposed to laying up riches here on earth. Um, and I think some good things there, obviously you have those thoughts there from the Bible and um you know, keeping your covenant with God, keeping God's law, doing right in the Lord's sight, trusting God even when people laugh at you, uh, delight and meditate and think about God's word, confess and forsake your sins. And we look at those things with prosperity, 
and that idea of you know keeping a right relationship with the Lord and keeping your eyes on what He would want you to have your eyes on and your focus on the things of God rather than the things of um, the, the, of this world. On the other side, you know, disobeying God's commands, not listening to God's voice or obeying His commands or covering up your sins. And as you look at those two sides of the, the chart there, um, you can see where the focus is, whether it's on the left side uh, and your focus is on God or on the right side and your focus is more on yourself and ignoring what God uh, has for you and wants uh, for you. Um, then uh, continuing on from there, uh, just some other thoughts um, to um, to go through the um, chapter um, and looking at the uh, Bible verses. And then uh, just some other tips and thoughts there for um, spiritual success and prosperity. All right, We have God's guidelines, but then just some thoughts there uh, for us as far as um, what we need to uh, be doing to be prosperous in, in, in the way that we're looking at here and the, the idea of the true success. Um, first of all, to focus on the future rather than on immediate problems. Uh, you know, a lot of times we can focus on um, just the here and now and the, and the moment, what we want to do and what makes us happy. Um, uh, and, and as opposed to thinking about our future and, you know, we can think about that in, in many different examples, whether it be, you know, even eating habits, you know, I'm hungry, so I'm just going to grab what's available to me rather than sticking to eating the right things or, um, you know, the idea of in the moment, uh, whether it be, you know, exercise or, or weight training or something like that in the moment usually isn't very fun. Um, it's difficult. It's tough if it's actually beneficial to us. Um, but the future is the results and the accomplishing the goals that are set, um, that we have set for ourselves. Um, so again, focus on the future rather than on immediate problems. You know, and, and as you look at William Tyndale, you're going to see this again in the, in the spiritual aspect of, um, the idea of you know, it, there was a lot of difficulty in the moment and things he was going through that would probably make a lot of us, you know, if especially if we're not in the right mindset of focusing on what God wants us to do, make us uh, give up or quit or just say, you know, this isn't worth it. You know, what what am I getting out of this? But um, then you may also see the results of Tyndale's life uh, that maybe he didn't get to see all of um, because his life was cut short, but the the positives and the the amazing things that came in the future because of the um, difficulty and the suffering that he went through and the same thing can go for us when we look at the scripture and how um, you know the the rewards in heaven um, for you know doing the right things and doing things in the way that God would want us to do as opposed to trying to stack up rewards here on earth which are worthless for eternity um, or we can uh, you know, focus on, hey, um, I'm going to develop and, and, and gain rewards in heaven. So again, focus on the future rather than on the immediate problems. Uh, another thing is place no limitations on God. That goes back to the idea of, you know, God has given us all we need. Don't say, I can't do this, God, even though you're asking me to, I can't because um, whatever reason we have, we're scared and we don't think we're able. Um, that's placing a limitation on God. He, he is there with us and he will help us to do anything that he wants us to do. Um, the, uh, another thing there, another tip, uh, for spiritual success and prosperity, finish what you start in all areas of your life. If you, if you set your mind to do something and you start doing it, don't give up on it. And you see that with Tyndale, you know, to the very end, uh, he didn't give up on what he started out to do. Um, forgive those who offend you and never hold grudges. We've talked about that before. The grudges that we hold often um, affect us more than anyone. They hinder us from accomplishing what we need to do um, uh, and really hinder our success and our prosperity. Uh, be willing to admit when you are wrong. Another thing that can hold us back. If we have something wrong and we have a, a guilt or something we're struggling with and we won't give that up and admit to it and confess it, then it's going to hold us back. Um, listen uh, rather than give up. Be patient when things don't go your way and trust God for your success. Um, so I want to run through those tips just one more time. Uh, 
focus on the future rather than on immediate problems, place no limitations on God, finish what you start in all areas of your life, forgive those who offend you, never hold grudges, be willing to admit when you are wrong, listen rather than give up, be patient when things don't go your way, and trust God for your success. All right, so there's some additional things in addition to those verses and those points there as far as uh, you know, the verses telling us how to prosper, but just some other things that we should work on uh, and strive to be doing. Again, I think these things become easier the more we focus on God and we stay close to Him. You know, so many of these chapters, um, they're not necessarily easy things to do when we think of it from a worldly perspective, but the more effort we put into keeping our eyes on God and focusing on our relationship with God, uh, the easier they become to do and to to maintain. Or if we do fall off track in one of these areas, we can get back on track because we're we're, we're striving to do that, and that's our desire. Um, but then lastly, looking at the uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the the William Tyndale story. I've touched on it a little bit as I've gone through. Um, but please make sure you're reading that. And there are then some answers will vary um, section where you need to provide the answers. So make sure you're doing that. Please read the story. Uh, there's a lot you can learn from that. Uh, again, I've touched on it a couple times here uh, as I'm going through the video. Uh, but the main thing I want us to see as we look at the teacher's lesson and the idea of William Tyndale, uh, he was at peace when his life came to an end because he uh, had fulfilled his life's calling. Um, and I think it was even, his life's calling was more affirmed by the resistance that he faced um, as he as he strived to fulfill God's calling for his life. Uh, so again, he had a peace uh, because he had fulfilled his life's calling. You know, I, I don't want to, I don't think we ever want to, we don't think about the end of our lives, especially at your age, I'm sure you don't think about that very often. Um, but, you know, you don't want to come to the end of your life and say, you know, I, I've done all this, this stuff that really now looks worthless when I could have done so much more for the Lord. Uh, and William Tyndale, I think, as he uh, was a, became a martyr for uh, the faith and for God and for doing what was uh, right for uh Christianity, uh, he came to the end of life, and I think even though it was short, he could look back and say, I'm at peace with um, where I am now, even though I've been through all these difficult circumstances, and ultimately this um, difficult circumstance is going to take my life, I'm at peace with um, what I've done with the life that God has given to me. I've used the tools that he had given to me, I've, I've fulfilled the will he had for me, um, and, and that's what we're looking at basically in the teacher's lesson, talking about peace. Um, the, the first thing there, prince, the principle of peace, uh, success is having peace in all circumstances of our life. Um, in every way, we're at a peace. We're, um, you know, we're getting to the definition to, to, the, to describe it. Peace is realizing God has provided all I need. Okay, so... Success is having peace in all circumstances of life. So putting those two things together, um, realizing God has provided all I need uh, in every circumstance of my life. So no matter what I'm facing today or whatever situation or whatever relationship um, is strained in my life or um, whatever hardship I'm going through, I can have peace. Because I can realize that God has provided all I need. No matter what situation we're talking about, no matter what circumstance I'm in, we can have peace in knowing that God is with us, He's providing for us, um, and He's going to take care of us. Um, the <clears throat> um, When we have inner peace in all circumstances, one thing I want to look at before I continue on, um, when we have uh, inner peace in all circumstances, uh, there's four things I want to go through with that. So inner peace in all circumstances, we will not become irritated when deprived of something we think we should have. All right, so we have inner peace. You say, um, you know, I think of that some with my my children. They're at an age where sometimes there's some difficulty between the two of them, and it's just, uh, you know, whether it be a, a toy they want to play with, and, you know, it's the idea of, um, well, that's mine. I want to have it. Well, yeah, but you, but you weren't playing with it at the time, and you didn't want it until the other one wanted it. Um, you can have a piece and saying, you know what? I'm happy to see them enjoying it. Um, 
I've enjoyed it as well. It's good to see someone else enjoying it, that idea of a, a, a peace and a contentment there. So again, we will not become irritated when deprived of something we think we should have. Um, we will not retaliate when criticized or abused. You know, you're going through something difficult. Um, how do you handle that as far as, hey, these, this shouldn't be happening to me. Am I going to um, respond in anger and... Um, in a non-Christ-like way, or am I going to say, you know what, regardless of this situation and regardless of this circumstance, um, I'm not going to retaliate because I'm at a peace with who I am in the Lord and where I am and what I'm doing in for the Lord. Um, thirdly, when we have inner peace in all circumstances, we will not become jealous of others. Um, again, that, that idea of Becoming jealous of others is usually because we're focused on ourselves more than anyone else. Um, jealousy usually becomes comes from a success of someone else, and uh, we should take joy in someone else being successful in something. Um, and that's that idea of what we talked about with with Jesus having a focus on others and meeting the needs of others. Um, you know, when someone else meets a need in their life or accomplishes a goal, that should not be something that hurts us. Uh, it should be, should be something we should have a, a peace about and, and a, really a joy uh, for that person. Um, and then fourthly, when we have inner peace in all circumstances, we will not worry about what might happen. And when we worry about what might happen, it usually hinders us from doing what we should do uh, because we're unsure of what the outcome will be. And because of our uncertainty, we say, you know what, I'm just not going to do it in the first place. That way I don't have to worry about that uncertainty. We don't like uncertainty. We don't like not knowing what's going to happen and um, you know, if we take this risk or we, we, um, try to do whatever we feel God has for us, um, and that can sometimes paralyze us or freeze us from doing what, what God wants us to do. Uh, and then, uh, continuing on there, there are three kinds of peace that we look at in the teacher's lesson. Um, peace with God, which is upward as far as, um, God and us. And that is talking about, uh, salvation. If we have a peace with God, um, we are settled on our eternity. Uh, we can have a peace and knowing that our, our eternity is secure in him. And that, that is what that peace is talking about as far as the upward, uh, peace with God. Uh, the next one, the peace of God. Now we can have peace with God without having the peace of God. And that idea is, um, the inward peace of, yes, I'm saved, but I'm also um, striving to do God's will in my life. And I'm, um, you know, I'm doing what he would want me to do. And I am having the right relationship with God. And then you were at a peace um, of God. Uh, that is the idea of, you know, I've, I've used my marriage um, as an example before. Um, when my wife and I said our vows the day we got married, um, that's kind of that, I, the first one there, the, the upward, that relationship, you know, we are married, we are husband and wife. Um, but to really develop that, that second one, that inward and to have that bond and that connection, um, we need to put the effort into knowing the other's heart and, um, you know, striving to put them first above ourselves, um, and meeting their needs over our own. Um, and that, that harmony of a marriage um, is the idea, is what we should be striving for. And that's what we're looking at there. So the peace with God is our salvation. The peace uh, of God is having that right relationship with God and, and a close uh, fellowship and walk with Him. And then the third one is peace with others, and that's outward. All right, so you had the, um, the upward is salvation, peace of God, or, or peace with God. The inward is the peace of God in our hearts and the way we are living our lives. And then if we can have those things, then peace with men, the outward um, peace of our relationship. And that is the people around us um, and having that focus. So focusing on God, first of all, and then focusing on others and then putting ourselves last. And we can have a last and we can have that peace uh, that we desire to have um, as we uh go through our lives in any circumstance that we might be facing. The antonyms of peace, if we think of what peace is, we think of what peace is not. 
and that is anxiety and that is worry and those two things when i think of those i think of just not putting things in god's hands not trusting him um, and not believing that he is going to meet our needs and not believing that he is going to take care of us so again anxiety and worry things that we probably all struggle with in different aspects or different areas but um, they're enemies of peace and they keep us from having the peace that we should have in god uh, then lastly the synonym i've used this word a few times before already in this chapter but it's contentment and i think a lot of this chapter are things that we all have in our head we know um, these aren't really i don't think they're really complicated topics no matter what age we are middle school to my age or whatever we have that that head knowledge um, but it isn't in our hearts and it is how we live our lives as far as a peace and a contentment in the lord or do we just say you know i'm trusting god but at the same time we're not letting go of those birds we're not laying them at his, at his feet um we're not allowing him to take care of us and to take care of our lives and to meet our needs. Um, we're holding on to those worries and those anxieties and those fears um, because we're not trusting God for our success. Uh, and as I say, go through this, I want to make a point to say it's not to say, you know, just to be successful. It's just give everything over to God and just kick your feet up and and relax um, and twiddle your thumbs or whatever. Uh we have to put the effort in, but but trust God for the fruit of the efforts that we do and the um, the way we live our lives. Trust God to um, see the results through to according to His will. Um, the result may not be what we want or what we think is ideal. We can go back to the life of William Tyndale once again, but it is the result that God would have for us, and we need to trust that and um, trust His perfect will. And then um, our idea of success and prosperity will be, um, you know, I, I did what God wanted me to do. That's a successful life. That's a prosperous life. Not, um, you know, I did what I wanted to do. I have all this, these things um, that benefited me only and not anyone else. I've not made any positive impact on this world in any way because I was so focused on myself. The world would view that as pretty successful, as pretty prosperous. But um, as term, in terms of our Christianity, and as we look at the conclusion of this book, a couple chapters left, uh, you know, we, you're getting to the idea of, um, you know, all these topics of spiritual wisdom and that spiritual growth to um, develop spiritual maturity and then to say, you know, my success is in God and doing what he wants me to do, not in whatever I want to do. And that's hard for all of us, even at my age, to have that focus where it needs to be. Um, but, but hopefully we can see the points again. These are, I really think these things in this chapter are pretty simple and things that we understand. Uh, but it's making sure that we apply it in our lives and in our heart, um, to really seek that spiritual prosperity and spiritual success over anything this world has to offer. Uh, so again, uh, uh, true success. And that's what we looked at here in this chapter. Uh, so lastly, just one more time for the things I said at the beginning of the video, success for the Christian begins with an, in, an internal contentment in God rather than external pleasure in the things of this world. God gives us specific guidelines on how to prosper as a Christian, and inner contentment and joy are gifts from the Holy Spirit. All right, so let's pray, uh, and I, I'll wrap it up for today. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for each of the students, and thank you for... Um, their families and the efforts that they've been putting in during this um, uh, different time as we've been out of school and not together in the classroom. Lord, I, I know I definitely miss that. Um, but Lord, help us to trust you through this uh, difficult situation. And Lord, again, I thank you for the efforts of the families and each of the students. I pray that you'll be with any requests that they might have on their hearts today, anyone dealing with um, whatever it might be, a sickness or an injury or a loss of a loved one, loved one or, or whatever we have, Lord, as we talk about um, giving our lives over to you in all these different ways. Lord, help us to give our burdens and our requests over to you today and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Um, I'm not going to have allow whatever is going on in my, li my life to just uh, control me through fear and anxiety and worry. Uh, but Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to give it over to you and your perfect will and say, regardless of what the outcome might be, 
uh, whatever the result is of this situation, Lord, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to have a peace and a contentment and knowing that um, that your will is done. And uh, that can be uh, something that we really struggle with and have a difficult time with. But Lord, help us in that way. Uh, allow us, help us to allow your Holy Spirit to work in us to have that inner peace. And and again, every circumstance that we face, Lord, we thank you again uh, for each student in this class. Lord, pray to be with them this week as they work on their uh, schoolwork. Uh, just help them to accomplish the things they need to. Uh, Lord, if it's your will, bring us back uh, in a couple weeks together. Uh, and if not, again, help us to keep our eyes on you and to trust you and your perfect will. Thank you again for all you do for us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, have a great week. Again, this is your only chapter uh, for this week. Um, so make sure, you, again, you spend the time reading through it. It's not too long of a chapter, but there's a little bit more reading than you're used to with the story of William Tyndale. Um, but again, have a great week, and let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you uh, soon. Bye.